Hello, I'm going to demonstrate the physics of buoyancy and discuss uh, Archimedes' principle. Here we have Archimedes' principle stated, the buoyant force on an object immersed in a fluid is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Now, we know in terms of Newton's laws that the reason for that is that the buoyant force we designate B is due to the pressure difference between the bottom surface and the top surface of the object. Diagram here shows an object floating on top of the uh, fluid, partly below and partly above. And there's a force of pressure from below, and that's what buoys the object up or supplies the buoyant force to counter the gravitational tendency to fall to the bottom. Over here we have an object that's totally immersed. This object has pressure on top as well as pressure on the bottom. Here I represented the downward force due to pressure on top and the upward force on the bottom due to pressure from below. The force pushing up on the bottom is equal to the pressure on the bottom surface multiplied by the area of the bottom surface. The force pushing down on top due to pressure is equal to the pressure of the fluid on the top surface multiplied by the area of the top surface. So that the buoyant force is the net difference between the up force and the down force, or F up minus F down. Again, the buoyant force is due to the pressure difference between the bottom and the top surface. Let me illustrate that with a demonstration. Uh, here I have a one kilogram object, and let's see how much it weighs. You probably know that one kilogram in the Earth's gravitational field has a weight of 9.8 newtons, and let's call that approximately 10 newtons. Now when I put this uh, 10 newton weight in this water, the pressure on the bottom will start to build up as it goes deeper and deeper until it's totally immersed. And we find when it's totally immersed it has a, a force or a weight to support it from the spring scale. The weight of the object now as measured by the spring scale, that is the upward force of the spring scale on the object, is now only about 8 newtons illustrating a 2 newton force of buoyancy. And if we were to measure the volume of the water displayed and then weigh that volume of water, we would find that that water displaced when it's totally immersed would weigh approximately 2 newtons. We can further illustrate that uh, with some other masses. Here I have a number of masses that have approximately equal volume. So when they're totally immersed in the water, they will displace approximately the same amount of, of water. Let me first of all start with a uh, cylinder of aluminum. This has a, uh, a, a weight in mass units of about uh, 100 grams. And when we immerse it in the water, we find that its uh, parent weight has been reduced by about uh, roughly 35 grams. Similarly, we find that if we take a brass cylinder, it has about the same volume. And when we immerse that in the water, we find that its weight is reduced by about 35 grams. It has the same volume, displaces the same volume of water, and therefore the buoyant force on it is the same. Let's measure a little more closely here. This has a mass, uh, neglecting the little bit of water it's collected on there. It has a mass of about... Uh, 265 grams out of the water. When it's immersed in the water, it has a mass of about 230 grams, illustrating 35 grams of weight reduction or 35 grams of buoyancy. And of course, actually, the weight hasn't been reduced. It's just that now, instead of being totally supported from above, it's now partially supported by the water through the buoyant force. If we were to do that with another cylinder here, lead, has quite a bit greater mass, uh, but again, this lead now has a mass of about uh, 340 grams, and when we immerse that in the water, we find that its weight, as read by the scale, has been reduced 
by about 35 grams, illustrating that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Now, another way to illustrate that is to consider this beam balance where we have these two beakers that are now almost perfectly balanced. We have the same amount of water in this beaker, about 500 uh, cubic centimeters, and 500 cubic centimeters in this beaker, and the mass of each beaker is about the same. So we have a balance situation there. Now if I take the, uh, the brass cylinder, for example, and uh, I hang it from the scale, and ask the question, what happens when I start to immerse this in the water? Well, of course, immediately it'll start to displace some water, and uh, therefore there'll be a buoyant force that'll start to build up, and uh, that in turn will be transmitted down through the water to the scale, and we find if the water pushes up on the brass, the brass has to push down on the water. And so again, uh, the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Now let me start to immerse this. You can see that the balance is now upset. I'd have to add more weight over here to bring it back to balance again. I'll do that in a few minutes um, or a few seconds. And uh, now that I've got this totally immersed in the water, I find that there's a 35 gram reduction in the buoyant force. So to bring that into balance, what I need to do is add 35 grams on this side of the scale when I put that back in there. To do that, I'm going to take uh, 35 cubic centimeters of water, or approximately so. Actually, it looks like maybe I pulled a little bit of water out of there uh, as uh, from the uh, water that adheres to the brass, so let me fill that back up again. Now I'm going to put in, uh, now that it's perfectly balanced, I'm going to put in here about 35 cubic centimeters of water, or 35 grams of water and see if it then again comes into balance when I get this uh, totally immersed, or at least approximately so. And we find that indeed the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Buoyancy and Archimedes' principle.